You know, um, Southern Gospel music, it's beautiful, powerful music. One of the things that has come through as they've been singing tonight is the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. And I'll, I'll tell you, they may not realize how important that is here at First Church right now. We've, we've really had a lot of people going home to be with the Lord lately. In fact, uh, one of our members just passed into glory this afternoon, Anna Kelly. And um, it's so beautiful to know salvation in Jesus Christ. It's so beautiful to be able to declare victory in the midst of that. And so we thank you so much for singing about those very realities tonight. Uh, Rick Lightheart is going to speak to us. Rick, come on up. tell you a little bit about PASS. Um, PASS is a crisis pregnancy center. We have three locations, one in Tinley Park, one in South Holland, Illinois, and one here in Lansing, just two doors down. Um, we are a crisis pregnancy center. We see around 23, 2400 girls a year who are in crisis pregnancy. Uh, obviously, our goal is that they do not abort, and so we have volunteers and we have a staff who ministers to these girls who come in and they're pregnant, and they, they, they're, they're scared, and they're frightened. And that's what we do. That's what the ministry is all about, really. Ministry to the girls so they have the babies. Uh, we are not always successful. Some of our advocates do, you know, their, their sympathy. And they, there's some, some sadness there when we know that a girl goes out and she does abort. And so we minister not only to the girls, but we minister to our advocates who come in and minister to the girls. Uh, we don't just minister to the girls. We minister to the boys as well. Uh, last week I had the privilege of preaching here, and I mentioned the story that we had a 17-year-old Muslim boy who brought his 14-year-old girlfriend in who was not Muslim, and she thought that she was pregnant. 17-year-old Muslim boy, 14-year-old Muslim girl. The boy brought the girl in to pass, which is highly unusual, highly unusual. That doesn't often happen. So I had an opportunity to speak with the boy. And he was frightened that his, his girlfriend was pregnant, and he, he said, uh, he said, uh, well, sir, uh, I'm never going to have sex again, uh, I'll tell you that. And I said, well, I said, uh, well, what, what, what brought you, what brought you past? He said, well, he said, um, obviously, I don't know if she's pregnant, so could you give her a pregnancy test? Yes, we will, we will do that, and we can give her an ultrasound as well. And, and obviously, we would like, if, if she is pregnant, you would obviously want to have the baby, right, young man? Is that Right? Oh, oh yes, oh yes. He said, but that's not what my fear is. My fear is that if my father finds out and my brother finds out, uh, I will be in a lot of trouble and I, I may be killed. Because his father and brother are Muslims. And the boy had slept with a non-Muslim girl. So not only are we dealing with a situation like this, but you have to think about the consequences for the 14-year-old girl, what she's going through. So I tell you this story, and I, I don't like to tell client stories all that much because I, I, I don't like to put pictures of aborted babies and all that. I, I don't like to minister that way. But I tell you that so you understand the depth and breadth of the ministry of PASS. In addition to the crisis pregnancies that we, 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 we tend to and we, we minister to, we have a post-abortive ministry where we minister to men and to women, and women and to men, who are post-abortive. And that may be a woman who has aborted a baby maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 5 years ago. And now she's struggling with post-abortive stress syndrome. And she's ashamed. And she's sad. And she needs a place to be forgiven, to be comforted. And that's what we do. And we serve in the churches. And we have a program that's called Hope and Healing. And it's for a post-abortive woman. We had a woman come to us some time ago. She was in her 70s. She had aborted when she was in her 20s, and she had carried this pain and suffering and shame for 50 years. And when she comes to pass, what we do is we minister to her, and we heal her up, and we, we mourn the loss of that baby. We have another part of the ministry. It's called our Abundant Life Program. When the girls come to us, many of them are financially straddled, and they, they don't have any money, and they don't have baby goods, they don't have diapers, and they don't have car seats, and they don't have blankets, and they don't have lotion, and all that stuff. And so what we do is we offer classes. We teach them 
how to have the baby. We teach them about breastfeeding. We teach them about prenatal care. We may teach them how to write a check. We may teach them about insurance. We may teach them about, about life. We may teach them about how to have a relationship with your boyfriend and how to move towards marriage and how we make that marriage last a lifetime. And when they come to our classes, we give them points and they get to exchange the points for the goods. We don't just pass out the goods and give the goods away, we exchange the points. And we find that a, a good way to edify the young girls and the, and the boys. And the last part of our ministry, well, I should say the second, but the first part, it's our abstinence program. We teach sexual abstinence before marriage and faithfulness in marriage to around 15,000 students in the South Suburbs. 15,000 students. Yes, we do. We go into the public schools and teach this message. Now, obviously, we can't tell them that Jesus is Lord and Savior, but we do teach the message that Christ says to teach, and that is that Maintain your sexual purity until marriage, and maintain that marriage for the rest of your life that you have one sexual partner for the rest of your life. It's not a message, not a message the world wants to hear. It's not a message that schools are, want to hear, but we're going to do it. You know, we're, this is what we're going to do. And so um, we have the privilege of ministering in, in a number of schools, and I think we're in, I think we're in 53 schools. Uh, Susan or Marjorie, are you here? How many schools, Marjorie? Around 60 schools over here that is where we're going to, to teach this message. So if, if you're wondering what the ministry was all about, and I'm not sure if you knew what the past was about, um, it's a heartbreaking ministry. It's, it's a heartbreaking ministry when you see the girls come in, and, and, and I, sometimes I wish you could, could see them come in. Um, the most heartbreaking thing, though, that I've experienced is the ultrasound is right outside my office. It was right outside my office. And there was a young woman who come in, and she was pregnant, and um, she was maybe eight, ten weeks pregnant, and she came in, and we could see the heartbeat, and everything was fine. And then she came in a week later, and there was no heartbeat. And I had never heard the wail of a woman who had lost her child. I, I had never heard that. And when this woman wailed about losing her baby, and, and she wasn't married, but she wanted to have that baby, and her boyfriend was there. And I had never heard the wail of a woman as it just, it just pierced the walls. And I had only been with the ministry about, I don't know, six weeks at that time. And that's when I realized, okay, this is more. This is more than just about saving babies. This is about ministering to human lives. So I just want to say thank you so much for what you do. Howie, God bless you, sir. God bless you. And thank you for it. Ken, thank you so much. And, and God bless you. And thank you for being here. Thanks, Rick. Uh, the offering will be received at this time, and you, you can, if you're going to write a check, you could write it to pass, or uh, if you're in First Church, you could write it to First Reformed Church. I'm sure the uh, deacons will just make sure that gets credited to you and so on, you can pass on to pass. Uh, Roy Slayerman is going to play during the offering, and then after the offering, as I said, there'll be like a 10-minute intermission, um, just a brief one so you can stretch, go to the restrooms if you have to. And um, also, I just want to mention that after the concert is over, uh, if you would like to see the Pass House, which is just two houses over, there will be people there, it will be open, uh, people will be there so that they'll show you the Pass House, you can see where we minister in this local area in the Ministry of Pass. Uh, Lord bless you as you give.